This is a little short clip of the finished adjustable tool holders for the lathe. I had some problems with the audio on this first clip um, as we make some camera adjustments and some mistakes there. So I'm just going to do a little voiceover on this. And what we're showing you here is just the, the raw stock. This is just 1018 cold roll, about inch and three quarters, I believe. And I've got part of these tool holders already turned on the shank portion of them. And this is probably really the only real critical dimension for the beginnings of this. We just want our three-quarter inch shank to fit our turret tail stocks. Now the upper tool holder there is basically what we're building. That's a factory brown and sharp. So we're making a little more compact tool for them. And what we've done is on this outer diameter, you can see the shank's already turned on this one. And we've got a relief cut in the front. And that just shows where we're going to separate the two halves. And the part that's unturned there is the shanking of this uh, tool holder. What we're doing is just fast forwarding through. This is a, a blank stock that we've already laid out and this is a shank we're turning. So we're just fast forwarding through this operation and um, getting it turned down to where we've got our three quarter inch diameter. This is just hogging off metal is all we're doing here. And once we get down to that three quarter inch diameter, why what we're going to do is go ahead and center drill and then drill out this shank portion of it. Um, and all this is is a clearance hole. It's not a critical dimension at all, but then we'll chamfer the outside and just kind of make it look nice. So we've got a, a eye appealing tool. We're, we're putting this much work into it. We want it to, uh, to look nice as we go along here. So here we're just finishing up this one, trying to get a, a pretty nice smooth cut on the outside. And this is the portion that's going to fit into the tailstock turret hole, of course. So um, this is a dimension, and I've noticed on my tailstock turrets, there's a little bit of variation between the machines I've got, so we just have to make them all fit. So here we're getting a little bit better view. We're going to go ahead and drill and champ for these, and uh, we're going to center drill this one. And, you know, this lathe is pretty well worn. It makes a big difference on how centered up and how round my hole is how I orient these drill bits. So if I orient it like this with the gullet of the center drill and then the following drills so that gullet is top and bottom, I'll get a truer hole. If I orient them so that the um, gullets are out the side, if I orient it in this fashion here, if you're looking at it like that, why well, I tend to get a off-center hole and it will be oversized and a little bit out of round usually. So um, just a little tip on some of these lays that are well worn, you have to understand what your lay is doing and, and find out how it's going to cut best. So this still works for me. I get a good accurate hole and it does real well for what I do. As I drill these, I'll also add a little bit of tension there on the, the quill lock right there so it's got a little draggy feel. That actually helps center this up better to, to get a better hole going. So I'll go ahead and get it started. And as soon as that hole started, well, I can go ahead and release tension on that quill and then go ahead and drill it and it will center itself up. Um, the lathe wants to turn a, turn a good round hole and do what you, you want it to do, but you have to do your part, your part along with it. So we'll go ahead and drill these out and uh, or drill this one out and see what we can see what we can come up with here this is I think the fourth one we're doing so I've only got one more after this one what I've done is I've went ahead and turned the front nose and shank and got them separated for the um, for this tool holder and the way we're polishing off the faces is I just put a a, a flat it's a quick change tool holder is what it is in the tail stock, but anyway, I've got a piece of 320 sandpaper, um, aerosol glued, Super 77 glued, to a piece of MDF, and all you do is you set them in between, run it at high speed, and uh, polish your faces. It flattens them off, so because you want smooth faces to match up, they'll, they'll um, adjust a little bit easier, and that way they're pretty smooth. So. All you do is run your 320 paper in there, work it around. You want to make sure it doesn't get away from you like anything else. But that will flatten out your surface. And I've already got this surface pretty well done. This is the, the nose piece on it. And uh, let's take a look at it. And it looks like that right there. So that's polished up with 320. And I'm going to go ahead and do the shank. We just put a little brass piece or a piece of aluminum over the top to protect the jaws and there's our nose piece to this point so let me go ahead I'm going to polish the uh, the face on the on the holder base 
and then we'll put these together and see how good we did. I got a little carried away there, tore through my paper. Anyway, that's what the other one looks like. Now, if we've done our job right with these two halves, they should ring together just like a set of gauge blocks would. Very similar to that. Two down, three to go. Now these have half inch shanks for half inch bushings. The other three are going to have um, three eighths reamed holes for three eighths bushings. Uh, the reason being, the most of the stuff that's going to be done on the the Atlas and probably the the Logan turret lathe too. Well, um, although primarily the Atlas is what I'm building these for, is going to be three eighths or smaller diameter drills tap shanks, reamers, whatever the case may be. So um, I'm primarily going to use probably those 3 8 holders and production of the bushings are probably about the same. The 3 8 are going to be a little bit easier. They're going to use a little less material. They'll be a little less expensive so I'll produce more of them and uh, set up those for the smaller drill sizes and everything. So that's my reasoning for doing three of 3 8 and then a couple of half. Halves gives me the option of I can take a half inch bushing and I believe I can put a zero Morris taper adapter in for that. Um, plus drill bits up to drill bits or shanks up to half inch diameter. So that's the reasoning for it. So I'm going to turn these other three down. Got three blanks left. Um, and like I say, the three eighths noses are a little bit smaller. I'm going to do those off camera. And once we get those done, well, I will come back and we'll start machining the sides of these and getting the holes drilled and tapped in. All right, well, here are our tool holders to this stage. They're all five turned to the same dimensions, or pretty much the same dimensions. Three of them have a 3 8 hole for 3 8 um, bushings in them, and two of them have half inch bushing holes in them. So, what we're going to do now is take them over to the mill and set them up, and we're going to drill it for our two uh, socket head cap screws to hold them down and then we're going to face down off the sides and the one of the ways that this would have primarily been done would have been to set it up on a rotary table and uh, index them that way I'm going to take my little touch probes and run them in Mach 3 and then I'm going to set my digital readout off of there we'll go ahead and just index up off the center of the hole and um, then we'll go ahead and use our DRO to space out where we're going to drill our holes and two of the base will tap and the, the upper ones will just be clearance holes, 5 16 clearance holes. These will be uh, drilled quarter 28 on all of these collars. And while we've got it in that same setup, we're probably, when we drill those sections, what we'll do is we'll probably we'll set them up in the middle this way, index off the center of the bore, and then we'll drill and tap our two holes, or drill our two holes, countersink them, whatever. We're, however, we're going to finish them out in both halves. And while we've still got it in that situation and perpendicular to where our holes were, why we can go ahead and face off the sides of the dimensions on those. So rather than putting them in an index table and then setting them up this way in the mill, in the mill vise, and machining them off that way, I think we can just as easily do it on this side just by cutting them off there, and then we'll have to flip them and. Um, machine away the sides, our clearance sides on the slots for our cap screws. So that's the that's the program we're doing and uh, go over to the mill and get it set up. Okay we're just going to probe for the center of our hole is all we're doing. So we've got our set up. Okay. 
Okay, that should be the center of our hole right there. Let's go ahead and zero on our diddler readouts. Let's go ahead and probe that one more time just because we can, see if it gives us the same numbers. Now the rest of this I'm just going to work off my digital readout. I think we're going to swap out that drill bit. That one acts a little bit dull to me. Alright, we got a nice shiny new number three drill bit. We'll uh, use it. I'm going to go ahead and countersink these and then grab a tap. Now, I'm not going to tap these all the way through here because I don't have the clearance. All I want to do is get them started straight. Alright, while we've got the setup, we're going to go ahead and narrow down the sides. We want a 0 .88 um, width total, so we've got 0 .44 per side. And what we're going to do is we've got 3 8 cutter. We're just going to move back in. I think the math tells me our DRO number is going to be 627 on both sides. So, let me coolant here because we can and let me get a pair of safety glasses little reality check there. These dimensions are not that critical other than our hole spacing and our and our threads in this. The width will match up to each individual set and we'll just go ahead and file them down and set them to match. 
Now see, we've got to go back, countersink this, we'll deburr these edges and everything, but then the base is done with the exception of the atlas, uh, when these fit in the turret tail stock, there's a set screw down through the top of the turret. I will probably just add a set screw in the top because there's lots of clearance in this. We'll get them together and see how they're going to go before we do that. But on a bigger turret with um, more tooling, a lot of times your, to your holders will be cast sideways to give you more clearance through them. I don't know if that's necessary here. Um, but anyway, we'll go ahead, we'll do the other four of these, and um, then we'll move on to the top. Deburr the back sides, finish tapping the holes. Deburr the edges, a little bit of polish, and there's our bases.